take the lead. All right, thanks very much. Thanks, Igor. Um, uh, welcome to this um, session. Uh, this will be about uh, decentralizing uh, open education using blockchain technology. This is uh, the work uh, I've been doing for the past for the past few years, uh, even before um, uh, uh, the, the quality chain project uh, on uh, investigating how blockchain technology will can impact uh, open education. Uh, how we can improve lifelong learning, how we can uh, 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 introduce decentralization within, um, within open education, within lifelong learning, within uh, 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 accreditation, um, uh, and what are, what, the, what are the implications uh, for, for uh, both, uh, the, both lifelong learners and also uh, educational institutions, educators, and so on. Um, so within this, um, uh, I, I will focus today on mostly on the uh, on the quality chain project, which is, I would say, European Horizon 2020 project, um, which is basically funding this work right now and um, uh, is uh, um, uh, particularly in particular funding. Uh, several pilots within the European Union about uh, uh, introducing decentralization technologies, blockchain technologies uh, in, uh, in open education. Um, so first of all, I'll uh, make, uh, I'll uh, say a few words about the agenda today. So uh, we won't, I won't keep you here for, the, for two hours. Uh, I'll, I'll, uh, we should, we should be, uh, we should be done. We should be finished within one hour. Uh, uh, but of course, I'll be uh, available afterwards if you want to. Uh, uh, if, you, if there are any questions, if there are any um, discussions you want to have, either on the platform, on the EG Connect platform, or somewhere else. Um, so first of all, I'll do a brief introduction about what this is, what this work is about, what are the goals, objectives, and what, um, uh, what are the findings so far. And then uh, we'll have some time to, for you to get uh, acquainted with the, um, uh, the tools that we are building. Uh, we have a prototype platform that uh, uh, you can have a go at. Uh, uh, try um, uh, some of the uh, budging technologies that we are um, experimenting with and then um, uh, give me your feedback, your comments, your, uh, um, your suggestions um, uh, before and then we, we can uh, close this and take up, uh, move discussions to the OG Connect uh, uh, platform. Um, so, as I mentioned, this, uh, this work is funded by the, by the European project Quality Chain. This is a Horizon 2020 project. It started last year. Um, it's about uh, decentralizing qualifications and specifically investigating the uh, verification and management of uh, decentralized qualifications for uh, uh, empowering learners, uh, re-engineering education, and also transforming the public sector. So this is a, a, a consortium of 10 partners. Uh, we, we are mostly uh, educational institutions, higher education institutions uh, from across Europe and also uh, public sector agencies that do uh, 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 recruitment for the public sector in countries uh, uh, like Greece and Portugal. Um, so this is... Um, it's 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 uh, um, uh, it, so this is essentially a pan-European network of universities and public sector uh, agencies working together uh, to investigate the uh, the potential of these um, of these technologies. Um, these are the key areas where we conduct we are conducting pilots within Quality Chain. Um, we have first of all lifelong learning. Uh, where um, uh, the Open University and me personally uh, are engaged. I am leading this pilot on investigating how we can support lifelong learners uh, through decentralized qualifications. 
then we, we have another pilot on smart curriculum design, investigating how we can make, uh, how we can help educational institutions make their offerings, their curriculum offerings uh, more uh, flexible and, uh, and adaptive to um, um, uh, ongoing changes in the, uh, in the job market and in their, uh, in their students' needs. Um, then there is, of course, public sector staffing, which is a big part of the project. As, as I mentioned before, we have uh, public sector uh, agencies working uh, on this, investigating how we can um, use blockchain technologies to verify degrees and make and speed up the process of uh, um, uh, and also make more transparent uh, the process of uh, hiring for the public sector. Uh, and finally, we are conducting also pilots in uh, consultancy, HR consultancy and competency management uh, services. So the lifelong learning pilot, uh, which I am leading uh, on behalf of the Open University has to do with uh, supporting lifelong learners throughout their uh, uh, journey. So this doesn't, this uh, transcends uh, uh, higher education. Uh, and uh, 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 we aim at supporting lifelong learners uh, uh, both uh, within their uh, formal education and also informal. Um, and we are doing this through um, uh, blockchain-based qualifications, decentralized qualifications that uh, are transparent and immutable. And on top of those uh, qualifications, we aim to provide uh, learners with personalized recommendations about, uh, for example, what to study next, what, is, what, are, uh, what are their possible um, uh, career uh, steps in terms of um, uh, positions available for them in the job market, um, uh, and generally scaffold their uh, learning journey in order to basically help them um, uh, in their uh, personal and also professional um, uh, progression. Right, so these are the main stakeholders. Obviously we are tar targeting lifelong learners. As I mentioned before, they pursue learning throughout their lifetime for personal or professional reasons. Um, and also educational institutions. These are the institutions that provide education or training services, uh, paid ones or free, for example, through um, uh, open educational resources or massive open online courses. And this is just a glimpse of the main use case we are considering. So we have um, uh, obviously the, the actors, the lifelong learner and the uh, educational institution. And at the very center of it, we have the personal portfolio of the learner, which belongs to the learner. They take it with them uh, wherever they go, even if they leave the educational institution. Um, uh, a certain uh, institution and go study somewhere else or engage into informal learning. They have uh, a persistent personal e-portfolio which contains all their learning assets. Uh, this, um, this, is, uh, this portfolio is stored on the blockchain, so it's um, uh, immutable, instantly verified, um, and it contains um, uh, uh, recognition uh, 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 methods, uh, um, um, uh, ways to recognize the, the achievements of the learner, for example, through what we call smart badges. So smart badges are based on, um, the, uh, on open badges, um, but the, uh, the key difference is that they are uh, stored on the blockchain. So they have uh, immutability, mean, it's mean, it means that they cannot be uh, tampered with, so we make sure that we don't have fake credentials, we don't have um, a fake qualifications, and uh, they, they can be instantly verified. So even if the, imagine a situation which is very real, which is very common to all of us, um, uh, an educational institutions, institution awards uh, um, um, uh, a degree, but then uh, for, an, for one reason or another, the ins institution itself ceases to exist. It may merge with another institution, it may change uh, its uh, uh, structure, it may be a completely different organization or it may disappear. Uh, however, the degree will still be verified uh, instantly um, uh, on the blockchain. So, um, uh, on top of the uh, 
as I mentioned before, we also want to uh, not only um, um, uh, award, uh, not only um, uh, enable this uh, um, uh, decentralized uh, uh, accreditation uh, uh, through blockchain uh, qualifications, but we also want to, uh, on top of that, uh, on, a, on, a, um, on an additional level, we want to um, support the whole lifelong learning uh, journey. So we want to uh, provide recommendations about, uh, for example, um, um, suitable uh, job uh, positions that uh, the learner uh, can apply for, or um, uh, learning pathways, learning uh, um, uh, options. Um, uh, 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 either uh, uh, formal or informal um, uh, uh, learning pathways that someone can follow. So to do that, we are, um, uh, we are storing on the, um, uh, on smart badges, we have the, we store the key skills that someone has acquired, uh, which are then mined and then, um, uh, and then recommendations are provided to learners about uh, what to study next and or where to apply for uh, uh, which positions are suitable for them so we, in in this mock-up you can see some um, recommendations that we uh, aim to offer to uh, learners for example uh, uh, so on the on the top uh, half of the screen you can see a map view of which positions uh, are available these are full maths uh, these are positions are, that are full match to the skills that the learner has acquired and obviously uh, on a map they can be filtered uh, according to the location, uh, to be location specific. And on the bottom half you can see the uh, recommendations that are a partial match to the skills that, um, uh, that a learner has acquired. And for those, uh, for those jobs that are a partial match, uh, the learner can also get recommendations about the, the uh, learning uh, materials about the courses that will help them um, acquire those missing uh, skills so so far what i have been doing is going around uh, in major educational technology conferences including last year's open education global conference in milan which feels like it was ages ago a lifetime ago um, and i've been running consultation workshops uh, where I have been eliciting requirements from uh, different groups of learners, educators, researchers, practitioners from the uh, open education and also from the educational technology community. Uh, so here I can summarize some of the findings from this uh, consultation exercise. Um, so essentially these four uh, major themes uh, have emerged. Um, the first theme has to do with immutable and formal uh, with immutable formal and informal qualifications. So uh, this is, uh, it's important that ePortfolios should aggregate both formal and informal qualifications, which can then be validated by employers and educational institutions. Um, the second theme has to do with lifelong learning pathways and micro-credentials. So um, learners should receive guidance in building lifelong learning pathways and acquiring micro-credentials. Uh, so that they can achieve their learning goals then the need to for micro credentials has um, uh, is very real and it has been uh, they are emerging for quite some uh, quite recently especially now in the uh, in the um, uh, in the in the covid uh, economy where which is where we have um, um, where there is a need for very flexible learning because they uh, because of the uncertainty in the uh, in the job market, um, so, and the and the uh, um, the option for micro credentials offers this flexibility, offers uh, ways for uh, um, job seekers, for forward workers to top up, uh, to update their qualifications, and be able to um, uh, um, uh, fill specific and new emerging market needs. Um, the third uh, major theme that emerged was about uh, career counseling. This is again um, uh, related to the fluidity of the job market, especially during these challenging times. 
uh, and the need for job seekers to be provided with a comprehensive overview of the job market and also the latest uh, market trends. Uh, just to pause here, you, you obviously you will have recognized by now that these major themes have not are not necessarily uh, related to blockchain technology. Some of them uh, are and can be tackled by blockchain technologies, uh, but also they uh, they are uh, generally. Uh, this is this has been a very valuable exercise, definitely generally for understanding what are the major challenges uh, currently faced in the uh, in lifelong learning. Um, so uh, to move on, the final theme has to do with uh, data ownership and privacy. So this is. A very um, a blockchain. Uh, this is some. This is an area that the blockchain uh, can um, uh, can help uh, specifically with uh, having to do. This has to do with uh, um, uh, learners and job seekers being able to own uh, their digital identity and their e-portfolio data and being able to control uh, who uh, accesses it, uh, in what ways, and for how long. Right, uh, so I'll pause here for a moment and I'll let, uh, I'll try and uh, listen to some questions uh, um, before we, um, uh, before we move on to the, to the next, uh, to the plenary um, um, uh, activity. Um, so the, I can see there is, a, there is already a couple of questions on the chat. Uh, so Barbara is asking, how does the personalized uh, recommendations work? Is it constantly updating? Is it also on the blockchain? Uh, so yeah, um, so this is work. Uh, uh, um, uh, this is ongoing work. This is uh, we are still um, uh, developing this, uh, this, and we we are still experimenting. But uh, the the main the idea is that whenever. Um, a learner reaches uh, a milestone whenever they complete a course, whenever they are awarded a qualification, they can then review their options. Uh, they can see what, uh, what other uh, courses are available for them and what, um, uh, uh, and what um, uh, positions, what job positions are suitable for them. Um, and the, the, the question by uh, Karen, uh, uh, if these are, uh, are recommendations driven by artificial intelligence, so far we haven't really uh, explored that. I mean, this is probably um, uh, something that we want to explore in a follow-up project, uh, as we are now more focused on the actual implementation of these technologies of blockchain technologies and decentralization. Uh, for making these uh, qualifications available and for making uh, recommendations and delivering recommendations on top of them. So we are, uh, uh, we are using semantic technologies where we are matching, uh, we are trying to do semantic match uh, from uh, between the, uh, the ontologies that we have for skills and also the ontologies, the data that we have uh, about uh, available jobs and also av about uh, available courses. Uh, but obviously, yeah, the artificial intelligence uh, uh, algorithms and um, uh, these technologies are the obvious uh, next step. Uh, Barbara is asking uh, on which technology relies the smart buds? Does the smart buds already work as a prototype? Yes. So, as I said before, this is we we are reusing and extending the open buds uh, specification. Um, so we are. Uh, so you, we, in a minute, you will have the uh, the uh, the opportunity to be uh, awarded um, uh, a smart badge, and then you'll have, and then you'll be obviously uh, you, you'll be able to uh, view it and, uh, and download it and verify it uh, against the the blockchain records. Um, and Ale. Uh, Hello, Ale. By the way, we are uh, um, uh, we are colleagues from the OU, but we haven't seen each other for quite some time. Uh, is it easy for any learner or employer to access instantly uh, the learner's accreditation? Yes. Th so that's the other use case, which is um, uh, which is uh, also investigated, which is, which is mostly investigated by um, the the public. Uh, sector agencies that participate in quality chain. Uh, so it's very important that, this, um, that these records are available 
two educational institutions uh, where a learner is applying for uh, for a new course to for a new degree uh, or uh, they are uh, available to employers either from the public sector or from the private sector um, uh, prospect employers where uh, where uh, the, the, lear the learner is applying for a position so uh, what we want to do with the uh, uh, with this uh, with this project with these pilots is make sure that not only we, we allow these third parties to instantly verify uh, these uh, qualify to, to uh, get access and verify these qualifications, which is very important, uh, because we want to uh, to streamline this this process. Um, um, for example, we have several weeks uh, we, uh, right now for the verification of a degree. We want to uh, minimize that to the absolute minimum to instant uh, verification. Uh, of qualifications um, and we also want to tackle the issues that i mentioned before about privacy so we want to make sure that only uh, specific entities have access uh, to this information have access to the uh, to the e-portfolio of the of the of the learner of the job seeker uh, they that they have access to only specific parts of the of this e-portfolio only to the parts that are relevant for a job or a course application and that, the, that there is a time frame within uh, that this, this access is allowed, that it's not uh, perpetually uh, and constantly um, uh, allowed. Right, any, any other questions? I think you can, you may also, I'm not sure if you can also uh, unmute yourselves and or raise your hands. Uh, yes. But, ah, okay. yes, you can, if, if anyone has a question and if if you would like to speak rather than use the chat yes you can unmute yourselves and speak <laughs> okay um there's also uh, we you may want uh to also hold on to if there is any if there's not a pressing question right now uh maybe you want uh, maybe it's best to move on to the actual uh hands-on uh, part of this workshop where i uh, give you um, access to the to the platform to um, 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 for in order for you to 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 um, to see what uh, what a smart buds what a blockchain uh, based buds uh, looks like and how you can download and verify it. Um, so I'll uh, go back to my uh, slides for a minute. Um, Okay, so this is the uh, this is what um, uh, we'll be doing uh, for the next 10, 15 minutes. So first of all, in order to get access to the platform, you need to register your name and email uh, in this form. I'll paste it also on the um, I'll paste the URL on the chat. Um, some of you have already done that. Um, I, I had. Um, since I had put the uh, the link on the OEG Connect platform uh, a few days ago, um, and some of you have already uh, accounts, and then the next step will be to uh, as soon as uh, I create accounts for you on the platform, then you'll be able to uh, you'll receive emails uh, um, uh, with um, an invitation with an invitation to complete your registration. Um, the next step will be will be uh, me awarding you a badge for your participation in this particular uh, workshop uh, and then uh, you'll be able to view download your badge verify it and then as a last step i'll ask you to provide your feedback in a very uh, short um, uh, survey so let me um, let me paste the uh, the link to the uh, to the uh, registration form on the chat so that you have easy access to it um okay. Let me try again. Okay. Right. And uh for those of you that have already um uh, initiated um, registration. Some of you have already initiated your registrations. Uh, um, and some of you have um, 
uh, started um, uh, uh, your registrations, I'll just send a, uh, resend a, an invitation to those that have not completed their registrations. Um, right. So I'll give you a minute uh, to uh, fill in this form. Uh, obviously, this is um, uh, anyone who does not wish to um, uh, to um, um, uh, to try uh, this. Uh, feel free to um, uh, um, not uh, um, uh, not complete the form. It's not a it's not a mandatory um, uh, exercise. But obviously, yeah, it's. Um, uh, it's quite important for uh, uh, for the uh, for this project to um, uh, get as many people as possible to try, um, especially from the open education community, to try these tools and um, acquire some early feedback. Uh, again, I, I need to say that these are um, uh, early prototypes. Uh, we are now in within quality chain. We are now moving towards from the requirement solicitation phase to the actual uh, testing and deployment uh, phases, uh, with a more with a wider deployment uh, with wider deployment uh, coming up in the uh, in the next year. Uh, so I can see that already some of you have completed uh, the form. So I'll what I'm. What I'll do now is create the um, the accounts for you. Uh, right. No, fifteen. Uh, fifteen people. Um, so that's great. Right. I'll give you uh, a few more minutes. I'll give a few more minutes to everyone to uh, finish up their registration. So your um, invitation email should arrive just about now. So I can see that everyone, almost everyone, has uh, registered. Uh, so um, let me share my screen again. Okay, um, so you uh, so this is the um, um, uh, homepage of this uh, of this tool. You um, you may have already seen that. Uh, so what I'll do is um, sign in. Um, so these are the um, these are the badges uh, that I have created on the platform, which are which I can then. Um, um, uh, award uh, to you. This is uh, this is the uh, the badge for this workshop: uh, decentralizing open education using uh, blockchain technology. And if I click on it, I can see some uh, details about the badge. Uh, more details are uh, available to um, um, uh, to uh, to someone who has um, received the badge. So we have, if I um, move on to a badge issuing, I can filter the list um, uh, with uh, participants of this workshop. So I can start uh, awarding uh, badges to the, um, the people that have already um, uh, finished the registration. Um, so let me do that.
So as soon as I award, uh, so the uh, badge assignment, whoops. Uh, so the uh, badge assignment is pending. As soon as I award uh, the badges, um, you will receive an email, a notification saying that you have a new badge in your portfolio. Alex, there's a question in the chat that says, what happens if a participant loses access to the email that was used to create this account? Right. Yeah. So this is this is a this is an open issue. Um, so we um, one of the one of the things we are investigating, and one of the things that you can do with blockchain technologies have uh, what we call what we call self sovereign identity, identity that belongs to you and doesn't belong uh, uh, to a third party, to a, to to a company, to Google, to an email provider. Uh, identity that uh, um, um, that is um, uh, that you control and that you own. Um, but so far, for just for the purposes of this of this prototype, we uh, I'm afraid yeah we'll have to rely on good old email and uh, um, uh, and participants, everyone having access, uh, assuming that you that you will retain access to your email account. Uh, at least for the purposes of this, of accessing this uh, this platform, uh, but it's a very yeah. But this is this is a this is a very important uh, issue, uh, being having uh, a complete control over uh, your identity and obviously the ways to authenticate yourself against um, uh, and being able to access your uh, your portfolio because in the at the at the end. Um, the, the, this platform is currently owned by the, the Open University. We are building it, but uh, in a future scenario, you can imagine that this will belong to you. You will be able to store, you'll, you'll have uh, what we call uh, uh, pods, uh, storage pods on your own devices, which are then connected to the blockchain. They are verified, but you own, uh, you will be able to have um, uh, control over your, uh, your content. This is actually uh, what um, uh, we're, we're, what we are working on with um, uh, uh, together with um, uh, the team from uh, uh, Tim Berners Lee, who is um, spearheading spearheading this initiative on solid uh, um, uh, on on um, uh, uh, self owned uh, content. Uh, uh, on the on the web, so this is um, this is quite a um, quite an emerging initiative and something that we want to uh, to look at uh, um, um, uh, in the future. Um, but just for the uh, for the purposes of this um, uh, of this um, uh, of this session, uh, we will uh, we will. Um, we will use these these tools in a more traditional sense, in a more traditional way, through uh, authentication, through email, and um, um, being able to uh, reset your uh, uh, your passwords through email, uh, like you do in any uh, in any web uh, in any website. Um, I'll make sure that everyone uh, let me just before answering i can see there is some activity some more activity on the chat but before i look at that i'll make sure that everyone has their badges uh, so that you can have and go you do, so that you can go and have a look at those um, so i think everyone is now uh, everyone has been uh, has a bad a bad spending so i'll start issuing uh, it's bad, so this may take a while. Um, let's see. Um, so there is um, there is a new uh, there's a, there's some questions about um, um, about cell phone content. So uh, this is I can paste some. Um, I can paste some links on the chat for with more information about this. 
uh, about solid about the solid initiative and how you can actually own your data on the web. Um, let me go past. Let me go back and so this is. Uh, taking a while, but I'll make sure that everyone has their badges awarded. Okay, so now you should all have received your uh, your buds. Do let me know if you haven't. Uh, you should receive a notification, an email notification in a few minutes. So uh, going back to the questions, Ale is asking about integrating certification from the past and from different educational providers um, who are no, who are, that are not part of the platform. So the idea is that um, educational institutions and everyone, uh, both uh, public, in, public um, um, both prospect employees, uh, uh, agencies, organizations from the private and from the public sector uh, should subscribe uh, to such a network. Uh, this, this, is, this is like having access to the internet. If you don't have access to the internet, you can't really uh, do a lot these days. So imagine that this uh, blockchain network is like another, uh, like another layer on top of the actual internet. So organizations that wish to use the services need, need to subscribe to this need to be a part of this uh, of this network in order to be able to use uh, these services um, and uh, 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 going back to uh, uh, to Ale's question about um, uh, integrating um, uh, certifications from past and from different educational providers this is another challenge um, that we want to, uh, to this is this is this is a very important uh, question. This is another challenge that we are looking into how uh, you can, um, um, uh, in a sense, have stackable uh, uh, credentials. How you can stack up your credentials uh, from different your qualifications that are acquired by different educational institutions, and in some cases this can be done easily if the uh, the qualification is part of the EQF. Uh, for example, or of another framework, uh, the European Qualifications Framework, of, or of another equivalent uh, framework. In, in other cases, if we are talking about informal learning, this is um, this is a, this is an open challenge of how you can uh, actually make sure that this that informal qualifications uh, are recognized as well. Um, so this is something that we want to uh, to look at. Uh, so by now you should, uh, most of you should have, all of you should already have received your uh, badges. Uh, I can show you, um, um, you, can, um, uh, you can view those badges. Let me sign in, I'll do that myself. I'll sign in with my learner uh, account, uh, with a student account. So I can, um, uh, so I can uh, see here in my uh, badges page, the, the badge that I have been awarded. Um, so this is um, about, so this is the um, uh, decentralizing open education using blockchain technology workshop participant at the Open Education Global. Um, there is uh, certain JSON data that are uh, available and uh, certain um, um, hashes that point to data on the blockchain. Um, I don't want to go into 
technical detail on what each field uh, is about. This is this is your data, so you can uh, download this and you can uh, inspect this. I'll, on, I'll, also, I'll, I'll only mention at this point that we have certain tags um, uh, attached to the uh, to the uh, to the buds. These are um, uh, you can see in this case we have uh, tags mentioning blockchain decentralization. Lifelong learning, e-portfolio accreditation. These are the skills. These correspond to the skills that you have acquired from this, uh, from this workshop, from from this session. And we are using these uh, to match, uh, to do semantic matching to um, uh, at, a, at a later stage to do to uh, to, um, uh, to skills that are required in the job market and to, and to uh, in order to provide uh, recommendations to uh, to learners. What you can do, what you can also do right now is uh, download um, either the blockchain verified uh, version of the badge. This is the version of the badge that you can verify, the, verify against the blockchain or the uh, traditionally verified uh, badge. This is the traditionally verified badge is the, uh, the badge that you can verify uh, uh, using services like Badger. Uh, so what I'll do is I'll download the blockchain verified uh, buds uh, and then uh, if I go to the home page, I don't even need to be logged in to do that. Uh, uh, if I imagine that I am a prospect employer, an employer that wants to check the qualification, uh, these buds that someone submitted to me, I can click on validate a buds. I will select the buds. And I'll also um, select the recipient's email. So if I click on validate, then I get the result uh, that the badge is valid and the specific checks that have been uh, made uh, against the blockchain record. So I'll give you a few minutes to try this uh, yourselves. Uh, if you have any questions, please uh, I'll put those in the chat. Uh, and uh, or unmute yourselves and ask them. I can see there is already um, a comment by Sean. Uh, one of the challenges faced by large blockchain providers such as Ethereum is that the size of the distributed ledger becomes huge and requires its node to download and store all badges for other people. This is this is again um, this is a this is uh, this is a concern. Yes, uh, so this is a very valid concern. Um, not badges but contracts. Uh, on Ethereum, uh, the, um, so um, uh, as some of you may know, if you are familiar with blockchain technologies, yeah, they, they are based uh, uh, smart contracts. What we call smart contracts are quite uh, quite essential. They uh, provide the logic uh, behind um, um, awarding a badge and the criteria for awarding a badge and for other and obviously for other operations on the blockchain so the scalability the scalability of the blockchain what sean is mentioning is a very valid concern there are there are a few technical solutions which uh which i will not go into much detail um but there is the, the latest ethereum uh, we are using in, in particular we are using ethereum uh within uh, within quality chain uh, there are the latest version of, versions of Ethereum do have some um, are, are considering very seriously scalability and they have some measures um, to, uh, to facilitate scalability. Uh, uh, I'm also, uh, I will also paste a link on the chat to answer a previous question about um, uh, about um, cell phone, um, about self, uh, 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 about owning a cell phone content on the web. I'll paste that. Uh, I'll paste this. Paste this link uh, on the chat for anyone that wishes to find out more about the Solid Initiative, which is uh, not, which is related to decentralization. It is. Um, uh, powered by decentralization, about from it, it uses blockchain technologies in order to um, uh, to to enable um, um, uh, to enable web users to actually um, 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 uh, own their um, to actually own their data. Um, 
Um, so Ale is uh, Ale is asking about customizing badges. So this is yeah. So we haven't yeah we haven't thought about that. So it could be yeah. Uh, this is a good uh, suggestion. Thanks Ale. Uh, there we we. Uh, there's there 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 um, there's no way currently to to do that, but um, um, yeah, uh, we'll uh, yeah we'll have a look and uh, see what we can do in order to yeah to be to allow participants to allow um, um, uh, to allow people to actually customize their uh, their badges. Right. So I'll give a few more minutes to any, everyone to um, to try out, to download their buds and verify it. Uh, Sean is asking if there is, if, uh, if Solid uses um, a fully distributed ledger uh, or a multilateral ledger such as Corda. So I'm afraid I'm not the best person to answer these, um, uh, these questions because I haven't, I'm not a solid expert. Uh, but there are certain people in my uh, in my team that are looking into that. I'll paste the link here for our um, uh, for our blockchain open blockchain initiative, uh, where you can find more details and you can also get in touch with um, uh, the other people, um, the rest of the team members that are actually actively looking into uh, implementing solid. Um, if there is another, so Barbara, Barbara is asking if there is another place to test and verify the badge. So the, the blockchain uh, version of the badge can only be verified on our platform because this is um, um, uh, this is the, currently the only endpoint um, uh, user interface uh, endpoint for uh, verifying um, a blockchain badge. The, uh, the non-blockchain um, version of it can be verified again against uh, services like, uh, like Badger. Um, uh, so these are the, um, uh, these are currently the, the two options that you, that you have either um, uh, to verify something like verify a badge, smart badge against the, the blockchain or against uh, another service like, uh, like Badger. Uh, sorry. I can paste that. Sorry, I can paste the link. Right. So we are nearing the end of this session. As I mentioned earlier, I don't want to keep you here for more than an hour. There is uh, a lot, a lot, uh, a lot of interesting things going at the conference. So I don't want to uh, hold you uh, here. Uh, obviously, you'll continue to have access to the platform even after the, the end of the session. And uh, as a last remark, I'd like you to I'd like you to have a look at this um, uh, this short survey. I'm pasting the link uh, in the chat. I'll also send uh, later on a reminder, an email rem reminder about this. Um, this is, as I said earlier, this is ongoing work. We still have a long way to go within Quality Chain to actually test and deploy these solutions uh, at a large scale. Uh, so you are, uh, you can consider yourselves as our very early testers, or as our early uh, uh, guinea pigs. Um, so your feedback is very, very important uh, for, the, for this initiative. So um, I'll Thank you again for your uh, participation and, and thank, thank you for your uh, questions, for your very active uh, participation in this, uh, in this session. And um, I'll uh, wish you a very good conference. Enjoy the rest of the conference. And uh, hopefully, yeah, we'll, uh, we'll meet again in, uh, either in, uh, in the OEG Connect platform or yeah, in another virtual or even face-to-face. 
uh, uh, conference at some point in the future. Thanks.